Radio Raheem here in Belfast, Ireland with the bronze bomber, Deontay Wilder. Yo, I've been over to the UK many times, and last time I was here, we were waiting on you to show up, and Anthony Joshua said you couldn't come in the ring. He didn't want you here unless the fight was made, and it was disappointing for everybody that wanted to see you and didn't get a chance to see you. First, let's just start there. You seem like you've been trying to get to the UK, <laughs> you know, often. Mm. What was the problem with that trip? I mean, you know, I, it was a great idea to come over, and uh, um, Scott Sports hired me to come over to commentate, and you know, I had no problem with that. But when I was told that I could get in the ring, I guess Joshua found I was coming, and um, I started hitting all these restrictions and talking about getting security to get in my ring and. You know when they when they when they when they didn't want me to get in the ring to sell the fight to get in his face to look him in his eyes you know what I mean let me see how real he is it's just the champion it's just the real one you know what I mean and they wouldn't even allow me to do that even just to promote the fight you know what I mean I guess you know I don't know what they expect I would do I mean I'm very unpredictable you know what I mean but I'm a man as well too you know what I'm saying it occurred to me today. And even yesterday when I was talking to Fury, how easy this fight seemed to come along. We waited so long for Joshua. We, back and forth, war of words, Twitter, everybody had an opinion. It seemed like the fight was made three times, canceled three times. Talk to me about the difference between making this fight and trying to make that fight. Well, making this fight, this fight really happened less than two days. You know what I mean? Um, me and Fury... We was on. A, we 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 was talking to each other. He was very disappointed that the fight didn't happen. I mean, happen. Um, he was apologetic about it as well too, um, because he see he's it's 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 plain it's 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 plain and clear who really wanted the fight. See, people people we don't have to really question who wanted it or not. My action spoke louder than than my words. You know what I mean? Offering him the higher purse of his his entire career. Accepting the fifty uh, million dollar flat fee, the smallest purse um, in history, with um, due to a, a a fight of this magnitude, I did everything. I just had to follow a pre appeal, uh, a pride appeal for that one, but I did it to show people that I am the best, and I'm gonna come to your house and do that. And they still didn't want to fight, you know. And uh, it's just sad, you know. They come up with all these excuses and stuff like that. It just it was draining, man. You know, with me and Fury, all of it was a conversation. He said something about, I promise you a fight, and uh, he's ready. So I said, let's do it. He got with his people, I got with my people, and here we are right now. So when the best want to fight the best, we know how to make it happen. I don't want people to get misconstrued about promoters. and man, Yeah, they play a big part, when, you know, play a big part, but when the fighters wants to fight, we can make it happen. You know, for lifelong fight fans, journalists who've been covering the sport for decades, it's been a long time since the heavyweight division's been this heated. Mm. You know, I remember being very, very young, and I was still watching old tapes of, you know, uh, the, what they called the golden era of boxing. But there can't be a golden era of boxing without the heavyweight division having superstars in it that are fighting each other. So when this Tyson Fury, a wilder fight came along, and it got made, as you said, so quickly, it kind of it was a shot in the arm for all of us who just can't wait to see – what we like to call strap season mm. unfold. There's a strap season happening in the heavyweight division. How did you find it being, you know, I don't know if you recognize this, but is the date I heard was like November 17th. If that's the date uh, is correct. You'll be at your 10 year anniversary as a professional fighter just on the 15th on that, you know, uh, mm. two days from that date. So I wanted to ask you about that journey, this decade from where you started to where you are now. Man, it's been a ride. You know, nothing has been easy for me. You know, I am still don't get the credibility I deserve with no no opponents. But, you know, I mean, I'm used to it. You know I mean? Nobody never want to see me obtain glory. No one never want to see me at the top of the podium. You know, I'm not that type of person that people want to see. You, you know, I'm young, I'm black, I got money. I speak my peace most of all. Forget the black and having money. I speak my peace. You know, when a black man speaks his peace, that's threat. You be, people get uneasy with that. That's that's a sign of, of threat, and people get threatened by that. 
because I can't be controlled. You're not going to tell me how to speak. You're not going to tell me how to walk, no talk. You know what I mean? None of that. I'm the champion. I risk my life in the ring for others' entertainment, even the, even organizations that hold certain belts. I risk my life to pay your fee for your belt. So I speak as I please. And with that being said, I come off strong as well, too. With that being said, you know, and people don't really understand it. They get frightened of that. You know, you're 32 years old. That 10 years, obviously, is 22 to 32. That's when men become men, when they realize the kind of person they want to be. You're in a profession that is highly visible, and you're growing up, if you will, in the spotlight. What is it about this sport that taught you the lessons that you just spoke on? Just just experience. You know, like you said, coming up on my 10 year, you know what I mean? Just just dealing with a lot of things in boxing. You know, my, my, my trainer... He told me years ago before I became a professional, he said, this is a snake game. This is snake business. It's going to be a lot of snakes in the grass. And boy, was he right. You know, he was right. And each and every time, you know what I mean, you see it. You see it. Most of the time, people are for themselves. You rarely can find people that want your best interest in heart. And that's why I love my team because they have my best interest in heart all the way. You know, all the way. And, you know, with that, you know what I mean? But also, even seeing the negativity, because there's a lot of guys that have gone through way worse than I in their career. And um, they've seen a lot of things. I, You know, a lot of guys call me for advice. You know what I'm saying? Some advice I can give them, certain advice that I can't. You know what I mean? Because it don't make sense to me as I hear it. It's like, why did you do what you did? That don't make sense. But this is boxing. And most of the time, guys get in this sport, they come from poverty. They come from a place where they need money support their family because this is all they know. And it's sad for a fighter to hear a fighter say, this is all I could do. Because when it's over, that's all you. Can, that's all the trait that you learn. You, ain't, you can't do that. You can't go to even McDonald's, man. You don't know how to flip a bird. You can punch it, but you can't flip it. <laughs> you can probably knock out the cow, too. You know, <laughs> uh, I've been in a lot of rooms, locker rooms, press rooms, even uh, – you know, uh, hotel rooms, interviewing fighters. And before the cameras started rolling, there's a, a jovial atmosphere here. Everybody's relaxed. Everybody's comfortable having fun. And I remember when I started covering you years, years ago, you were relaxed and comfortable and having fun then too, which is a hard thing to maintain through success. But a lot of people, when they see the clips of you and the sound bites, you're a villain. They see you as, you know, like a bad dude, like a, a mean guy. First of all, is that a... Uh, an image you craft and are comfortable with or would you rather people to have a better understanding of the, the full you? The I, mean, I mean, whether they understand or not, that's not my problem. Because the thing about boxing is you gonna watch. Whether you hate me or love me, you gonna watch me. I'm the most exciting heavyweight in the world. When you get dressed and come to a fight, it's one thing you wanna see. Somebody get knocked out. And that's one thing I do deliver and I do it well because I'm an artist at it. I knock some out. So, I I'm, I'm must see TV. Whether you want to see me or not, I must see TV. And then when you go through it so much, you really don't worry about that stuff, man. You know, I know who I am. I know what I represent and I know what I stand for. And when you know who you are, you don't care about outside people, what they say about you. Why? For what? As long as the family taken care of, as long as those babies smiling, as long as you happy in the inside and you love yourself, shit, who cares about anyone else? That's what's wrong with the world. Too many miserable people in here. Too many people seeing someone through a TV screen or, or just seeing them in person without knowing the person that's inside of that person. You know, many times I'm gonna get, I'm a, many times people see me and do the perspective of me being in the ring and not really understand who I am. But it's not their fault because it may not be a never a time where they can just be around me and to really just to see that side of me and stuff like that because I'm a loving person. I'm a person of peace. I'm a person of respect. I'm a person of love. You know what I mean? That's my whole, all my brothers, that's what we're about. But if you break that peace, then we don't bring them boys out. Now, you don't only deliver <laughs> uh, blistering knockout moments in the ring, but a lot of that image also comes from you delivering blistering sound bites, mm. right? Now, you talk about you're a guy of love and you're a guy of peace, and it's certainly a peaceful and loving environment uh, around your team. Mm. But some of the things that you said mm. are the counter opposite of that. 
and it gives people impression like maybe you're a, a, a cruel guy, a crass guy, a, a violent, not just a sport, not a sporting guy, but a violent guy. Obviously, there's a couple of, of quotes that have gotten you. I don't know if you consider it to be trouble, but have certainly, certainly raised eyebrows. You know, the wanting a body on your record, the most recently wanting to cripple Brazil in front of his son. Where did those kind of comments come from? Where 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 are you in your head when you say make those kind of comments? There's the energy that I feel at the moment of the time. You know. However I deliver it and how people may take it, then that's their business. You know what I mean? Like I said, I do my job. My job is to fight. <laughs> and I do that no matter how much. You should love a person that can get in front of the camera and express to you how they feel and show aggression. But not only through aggression, but through how I, how I speak. You feel what I say. Even when you look me in my eyes and I speak to you, I mean what I say. You mean those things literally? I'm, this is boxing. This is a sport. This is, this is, this is not a gentleman sport. I don't ask you, can I hit you in your face? Nor do you ask me. This You may be on the outside, but even on the outside, like I said before, you must be cautious at all times because you just never know what hunger shark is going to come up in your territory. You never know who gonna, who, who, who's coming around. You got to be careful at all times. The gentleman thing goes so far. This sport, is a, this sport right here is a gladiator sport. This sport right here will get you hurt badly, seriously. I can I can play the nice guy. I played the nice guy before. What did it get me? Nowhere. I don't, I'm not playing no bad guy. I'm not playing the villain. That's just how people make me out to be because they don't understand me. You know what I'm saying? So I I only could be who I am. I only be who Deontay Wilder is and who I am. You know. But have have I said the worst thing you ever heard in boxing? Want to kill a guy in the ring might be the worst thing I've ever heard in the boxing. Worst. I'm not the first, so right. it can't be the worst. Is he, I'm not the first. It's, it's the worst. You're, you're not the first to say it, and people have done it. But Come that's the now. that's why that's people the worst heard of killing killing someone in the ring on purpose. Yes, it's probably the worst thing. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what were you I'm thinking not, of? What's I worse than I'm that? Not quote. I'm not gonna quote people. I, I'm not gonna name drop. I'm not gonna quote people. I just asked you a question. And if that's your honest opinion, then it, hey, let it yeah, be. Maybe there's I things I haven't heard. heard. Worse. I done heard a lot worse. And give me an example. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, I'm going to keep it as that. You made a comment that this is a gladiator sport. Mm -hmm. And that's true, certainly to a degree. And when boxing purists hear that, right, and they hear like our interview after the Ortiz fight, you say, skills don't pay the bills. They're just coming to knock you out, right? That kind of thing. Uh, for a purist, it's like, well, you have to you have to move this way. You got a jab here. You got the right hand is thrown correctly. The hook is thrown correctly this way. Obviously, you don't ascribe to that theory. Uh, what made you believe that? You know what? The science is out the window. It it's is. just gladiator. It's a myth. It's a myth. And I don't want to take away. When I say it's a myth, I don't want to take away from all the great trainers in the world. You know, it's a lot of great trainers. Rest in peace, Emmanuel Stewart, because Emmanuel Stewart, said that this this very moment will happen. He said that me and Tyson Fury will be the mans of the division. He told me that Deontay Wilder will be heavyweight champion of the world. And even when he started fighting the so-called best that people say the best, you still gonna knock him out. And I'm living the prophecy. Me and Fury are living the prophecy. And now we finna clash with each other to see who's the best. You know, people say a lot, people say a lot of things, you know what I mean? And how can other analysts or anybody else say anything about boxing if you never experienced it? Do you know what it feels like to walk that walk the tunnel? You know what it feels like to go over the ropes? That feeling? You don't know what's gonna happen? You train hard for it. But can you execute everything that you done work? You're not perfect. And in boxing, you gonna get hit. And my thing is, I don't know when it's coming, but it's coming. So if you ain't endured that, if you ain't really been in that ring to say that, how can you say, all right, you throw the left hook like this, or you supposed to throw the jab like this, you supposed to throw the right hand like this. How can you tell a person, have you trained someone to make them a champion? Have anybody ever done, these are the questions that I ask myself that they should be asking themselves, you know? How do you know? How do you know what it takes to be a champion? How do you know what it takes to be just a fighter? And all these people wanna call fighters bombs. But when you get in there and fight that bomb, though, <laughs> see, it's a different thing when it comes to the ring. You can say anything you want outside of it. On the outside looking in, that's easy. That's nothing. That don't cause nothing. 
But get in that ring. You paying more than getting money. You paying for your life. It's a price. So that goes out of one and out of other when people say certain things, whatever, because they are never understand this sport. Even the ones that 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 have certain things, organizations and stuff, you ain't never been in there. So you'll never understand what we feel, what we go through, what we put our body through in training and stuff and break down the sacrifice from our kids not seeing it. When you saying, I'm going to see you, baby, and then something happened, you can't see that baby, and you done promised that baby that, and you had to make up another promise because the thing about kids, they don't forget nothing you say. And they always remember the last thing you say. That's why I always I leave with my children that I love you. Daddy going to be gone, but I love you because I'm coming back. You feel me? And that's just the thing. that It's so much emotions in this sport that people don't understand. It's easy to criticize a fighter. It's easy to criticize him, how he acts, whether it's inside of the ring or the outside of the ring. It's easy to, 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 to criticize him, the way he speak, or the, the mannerism that he possesses. Don't judge me, because God's going to judge you the same way when it's time. Though that judge will be judged. That's why I'm staying blessed. So I continue those that judge me because all those blessings is raining down on me. You know, this is a sport of understanding. And if you don't understand, you will be lost. You know, it's, it's interesting that you take the <laughs> take your principles there, right? Because I've I've referenced you as a faith based fighter. I didn't mean religion wise. I mean that that's what I see. And I, I could be wrong. You certainly correct me. But it feels like in those moments uh, of jeopardy, even with the Ortiz thing, it felt like. It wasn't necessarily, oh, I'm going to use this tactic or make this adjustment. You're just going to will yourself to be victorious. Like, I'm going to come through this, and I'm going to be successful. Tyson Fury is known. His best fight was Klitschko, and he was got a reputation for being able to frustrate guys, mm -hmm. use their tactical skills against them, smother them, make it difficult for them to execute game plan. So knowing that, and knowing that that's not your approach, you're not a scientist in that way, what is it that will carry you through the, that fight to the finish line against a guy like Tyson Fury? That's easy. Everything that's been carrying me to this far. My mind. This is powerful. This right here is very powerful. People don't understand it. They think I just talk crazy just to talk it, you know what I mean? I always talk about meditation. It's a powerful thing. And one day, everybody's going to be talking about it. Once they master it and learn it and see what it benefits you in your life. Mm. <clears throat> so every fight, <clears throat> this right here, carried me through. Coming up in this sport, I never had skill, but I had will. I had heart. I had determination. You weren't going to beat me. I didn't see it. Nor did I feel that energy. And that same thing, I, I, I possessed it. Years ago, the same thing I possess now, but it's stronger. Because I've been the longest reigning champion in the, in, the, in, the, in the sport. Really, I'm the longest reigning champion probably in the sport of boxing, if I'm not mistaken. But if not, you know, just to get here is a blessing because many even doubted me would be to be here. And no matter who I fight, I possess something that they don't. They probably trying to practice it right now. It probably my my... The guys that are looking up to me, I know they listen to everything I say. They study me. You know, just like Stavern said, he was studying me for two years. This man had a, another whole man on his mind for two years. And what happened? I possessed something that he couldn't, although he did so many tricks. And only Stavern will know what I'm talking about when I use that term tricks. <laughs> I know something that he don't know. I know what he tried to do in that fight. It wasn't going to work because he wasn't powerful enough, Stavern. <laughs> you know, you and Stavern got into it verbally. You and Ortiz got into it verbally. But you and Tyson, it's a great show. Both of you guys, uh, you know, don't hold back when the microphone's in your face. You have to be held back when you're in the same room with each other. He made a comment that, you know, you and Joshua don't have a brain cell between you when it comes to boxing intelligence. Mm -hmm. it, you just talked about your will and your mind being what carries you through. What do you consider to be boxing intelligence? I mean, boxing is challenges is, is 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 still being able to throw the jab, the setup for the right hand. You know what I mean? You definitely have to be intelligent to understand the combinations. 
You know what I mean? Even when it's when it's called out to you where you in practice. One, two, one, two, three, two, three, four. You gotta understand those. That's that come with intelligence. Learning, practicing it, experiencing that. And as you experience it and you apply it to your life, you, you, you become intelligent in the sport. You you become, that's why they say styles make fights because everybody got different style and they got a different method of using their style. And what works for you works for you. I don't know why people criticize fighters from their technique and their style. This is what the sport is built upon. This fighter style. Come on. I don't understand it. But the only thing I can get out of it is people just, they don't, you know, they know not what they say. Or maybe they do know what they say. Maybe they're miserable. Or maybe, maybe, it's a lot of maybes. You know what I'm saying? But I just don't understand it. This is what the sport base of all, I mean, I have a style that people have never seen before. And because they never seen it, they don't know how to analyze it. And that's okay with me. But one day they will. That's why I say, don't love me when I'm gone. Love me right now. Shower me with love right now. Because it's going to be a time where my name will be spoken for years and years and years. For years. Of what a great man he did and all that he accomplished in this sport. And then that's when they're going to love me. Don't let me die. <laughs> don't let me die because my head is going to be at my funeral. <laughs> uh, you talk about understanding. I feel like of all your opponents, what I'm getting at is you and Tyson Fury probably have the best understanding of each other. Yeah. I feel like it's good spirited. Yeah. You guys are putting on a bit of a show, but there's no like real hatred, animosity there. You guys are selling a fight and are both come to win. What, 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 is, what is your measure of Tyson Fury as a man? How do you take him as a man and an opponent? I mean, as a man and as an opponent, I look at him as the, as the same. Um, as a man, as a part, I think he's a good, great guy. You know what I mean? Uh, he he he's the type of person that that uh, I see a lot of similarities in me. You know what I mean? Being able to speak his piece, I'm very big on speaking my piece. I'm not gonna let no man stop me from speaking my piece. I don't care what I say. This is boxing. This ain't tennis. This ain't no other sport. This is the love of the sport. This is sport is built off you talking your shit. He talking your his shit, and made the best man win with the shit talking. <laughs> and then when you get in the ring, may the best man win with the intelligence, as you may call it, or as Fury may say. You know what I mean? That's what it's all about. People get too afraid in this sport. The fighters are already enough afraid. And yes, a fighter can be afraid. A fighter are scared to fight. You're human, ain't you? You gonna feel that. You don't think when you been when the guys in the military ain't scared to go out there on that front line? Yeah, that's a fear. Just like in the ring, you got to protect yourself at all times. 36 minutes if it's a 12-round fight. Just like that. And don't get tired. You ever felt what tired feel like almost about to die? Yeah. But it's another level to it. How about I'm almost about to die and I can't, you know, I'm almost about to die and barely can breathe. You know what I mean? When you all, when you feel that, like, I'm gone, like, but you, you can't breathe at all either. Like, it's a real situation. But at that moment in time, it's always levels to everything that we do. You know what I'm saying? So if you can overcome that, then then it's always another level. So if you can overcome that part, then you good. You know what I'm saying? Mastering your skill, mastering your art, your, what you what God bless you to have. You know what I'm saying? Not worry about what everybody else feels and think. Because if you worry about what somebody else feels and think, you probably be broke. Because you'll be the one hating and talking about, man, he think he did. Have a seat, sit in the back of the bus. Making this fight between you and uh, Tyson Fury, it felt exactly as you described. Like you guys both have mutual respect, and it, it seems sincere. But you guys have been each other's face. You've been talking shit back and forth. You and Joshua, I don't think, have barely been in the same room together. But the animosity is so thick and so real. I don't think that you're putting on a, a show at all. Like, how do you feel about him personally? And as an opponent or a potential opponent, how does that relationship uh, fall in, on your mind? I mean, you know, I'm known to be honest, and I'm always honest. I, mean, I used to like the guy, though. I really used to like him. You know what I mean? Um, I definitely still wish him the best. I like what he has done as a black man, you know, to take over his country and be able to support. You rarely ever see that, you know. Um and it, that that right there is, is 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 great to see, but you know he's not the best, and he know he's not. 
you know, all this has been something to 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 blind the people, to to make it seem like something that is not. You know, many people could easily say, "Oh, he's just jealous." Of, no, why would I be jealous? I got something the best. I got the best thing in life. I got a loving. I got a loving wife, and I got loving kids, bro. Every day I can wake up, I see those beautiful faces. You know, whether she kissing me, saying good morning, baby, or whether the kids come in there, or whether I'm saying good morning to the baby and she's smiling, look at me. That's 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 life, man. That that right there is rich. You can't buy that. You know what I'm saying? So me, I ain't never jealous. Now, many people be jealous of me or what I possess, cause you can't buy this. You know what I'm saying? But he just didn't want to fight, and that's the thing that I I I had the most trouble about. Is they prolonged this thing for like three and a half months? They knew that what they was doing. I wasn't never in the plan. I don't see how people could could not see it, but I, I but I also could because of all the things that they was putting away, all the the hype that was built up around this guy, and now it all coming crushing crumbling down <laughs> day by day, day by day. And if it ain't crushing, not you don't even hear nobody talking about him fighting Povetkin. Because people have waking up, they're woke now. You know, they see what's going on. People know I wanted to fight. I t- you know, like I said, I, I, we offered him money. He didn't want it. We uh, we took lower money. They didn't want to do it. Have I lost my pen? You got damn right. It's somewhere in the, uh, the Titanic. You lost your what? My pen. <laughs> it's in the Titanic. The ship that went down. You know, we gotta go find it. You know, Floyd Mayweather famously said, we're prize fighters. We fight for a prize, stupid. Like, this is what we're here to do, make this money. So for a fighter in a situation such as yourself to say, I lost my pen. Like, I'm not even thinking about the Joshua fight, which is the biggest money that either one of you could make in one night right now. What did they do to – it it has to be personal at that point. Like, what did – they do in the process of that negotiation that offended your your sense of right and wrong or principle to the point where the money doesn't matter anymore. What do they do, right or wrong, where I the mean, money don't matter? Your you know your your sense of what's or character, what's right and wrong. Obviously, to to say you throw that money away just mm-hmm. because you don't want to deal with them mm-hmm. had to be something personal. Had to be something that they offended I mean, in you. Just all the lies, the manipulations, the contradiction. I mean, you've seen it. I know you can't believe them at this point. You know. Like I said, I don't want nobody to be a fool for nobody else. If you're going to be a fool, be a fool for yourself. It's plain and clear what happened. When I land here at Belfast, I had a fan come up to me, and in front of everybody, he was he was talking about how Eddie them didn't want it. He broke that shit down better than we, you and I could break it down. I'm like, bro, you was paying attention. I couldn't do even look at it. I had to look up and, like, and say, everybody knows it. They knows it as well, too. You ain't the only one that knows it. Everybody knows it. They just acting ignorant. And then being, they just, they don't want to see the guy lose. I mean, Britain has a great thing going on with it where they had. We talking in the past. They had because, that, you know. But they didn't want to see that go. And I understand that when you come from a place that you've never been in a long time and you bring it back up. And then America, everybody hates America. You know what I mean? Everybody want to up one on America all the time. And they had that. You know what I'm saying? So even the ones that was that was that saw through all that bullshit, they still entertained it because they don't want to see him lose. You done seen guys lose their manhood over this, then turned into straight women. Like for real, it's crazy. <laughs> then turned into straight women over this situation. They don't want to see the best fight the best, and that's a problem when you don't when you in a sport and you don't want to see the best fight the best. What's the excitement at? There's no excitement in it. There's no entertainment in that. Not seeing the best fight the best. You always want to fight someone lower than you or you feel like you can win or win or you feel like you, I'm not going to fight until I feel like I'm ready to fight them. What the world? You are champion. That's no such thing as fighting somebody when you feel like you're ready, you can, you can beat them. Especially when it pertains to someone like me with my style and stuff. You'll never be able to, to you'll never be able to feel like you will beat me because there's nobody out there that can show you how to fight me. You may find somebody that can have speed, you may can find somebody that can be awkward, 
but you'll never find nobody that possesses the power. So you'll always be missing some ingredients when it comes to Deontay. Why nobody never had the full ingredients. The only person that had the full ingredients is myself. Not even my close people around me know the, how to beat me. No one but myself. And even whenever I think about being myself, that's a hard task to do. I'll get I'll get frightened to fight myself. Seriously. Seriously, it's no joke. Like all seriousness, because I know how serious the bronze bomber is in the ring. I know what he feel when he's in that ring. And people, ah, oh, you're just the same person. Well, hey, you better not get in there and find out. You know. And when I speak like this, this is when people, cause it get under their skin. You know, they can feel what I'm saying. <laughs> cause they never experienced it. I'm a real one. But I come in peace, though. You know what I mean? It's just boxing. To, like, I, <laughs> like, I can't explain to these people. I'm the realest champion in the business. It ain't going to be. Guys try to be like me. Guys want to be like. They want to care for themselves like me, have a swag like I, speak like I speak, have the respect that people have for me. They can hide behind those computers and stuff, but when you see me in person and when I'm in your presence, you will respect me. It's a must. You know what I'm saying? It ain't just because I'm intimidate you, because I don't want to intimidate no one. I want you to love me. I want you to be happy to come up to me. Hey, brother, shake your hand. Let give me a hug. You know what I'm saying? So I don't, I don't try to gain people through, through intimidating them. I don't want you intimidated because of one that's fearful. You don't know what he's capable of doing. You don't know what he's gonna do in that moment of time because he's scared. Because <laughs> he's scared. Look at all these. Look out. Look how they putting certain policemen in certain districts. I had a conversation with a young officer in Atlanta, and they got him in Bankhead out of all places. And he's young with a family and married. <laughs> and the things that he was telling me, he don't want to be there. He don't want to be in that district. He's scared every day of his life. He said he just want to go home to his kids and his wife. So if you're already afraid of a certain people or a black person, if you're already afraid, then it don't take nothing to, when this coming out. and. You feel me? You already frightened. And if you're scared, you don't need to be in that district. You don't need to be out there because things happen. Like it's been happening. This is true. This is serious. When he told me that, I saw a thing about all the lies that was taken. This man right here telling, <laughs> he like breaking it down. He really revealing the secret to all this chaos. They're scared. This skin color, it carries power. And with power, it carries intimidation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But on another subject Yeah well that is another subject But it's an important one And coming from Alabama I would imagine that Growing up you have Had to have had A different perspective Than all of us You know city guys And whatnot. Uh, yeah, I, what What's the tension like That there And also when you talk On these subjects People are like Oh you know He's a fighter Shut up You shouldn't be talking About social issues Or you know Where's he coming from Making this racial mm-hmm. Talk to us about why it's important And every time I've spoken to you You've worked that into the interview at some point or another Clearly that's a part of something that's on your mind and your spirit Why is it important for you to speak on these issues? I mean it's very important because it's a real situation It's live right now You know When we look back in the past It makes us say man we done came a mighty long way Even a song say I've come a long way I've come a long way But we still got a long way to go the issues that we faced in the past, we still face these same issues to this day. And if we shut up about it, then they'll sweep it under the rug. It'll still occur. It'll probably get worse than what it is now. So it must be talked about. And with and, and, the, and, and the power that I have, the, the stage that I have, why not? People listen. You know, they hear. I speak for the voiceless. I especially speak for my people because I've heard, everywhere I go, man, I'm loved. No matter what people say. I'm loved and respected. You, were, man, I didn't seen some things over me. Talk, you know what I mean? I didn't, man, I don't, I, I don't understand how people love me so much because I'm just being me. I'm just being real, and people feel like I speak for them when I say things about this because it's a real situation. The little people that are looking in, you know, they may not, they may not go do this thing. They, they, they definitely the ones that want people to start talk about this subject are the ones that are not infected in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's easy to say, stop talking about it. Well, if y'all guys stop talking about it, that ain't true. 
long as we continue to talk about it, it's going to bring a change because if that person went woke, he's going to be woke at some, some point of time in his life. And it may be today. It may be tomorrow. But you continue to talk about it, it's going to come out. It's just like history. Our history is forever lost. We have to pay money to find out our history. And when I talk about this shit, this shit makes me so sad. It almost makes me shed tears because sometimes I still look at pictures to this day and see a black man hung with his hands tied behind his back with fire coming up off his feet. I'm like, God damn, how many ways you trying to kill him? He already can't free himself, but you still put fire on his feet too? When I look at that, I look at that's my people. He could, you know, the generation down, that could somebody be, be a relative to me. I always think about what have we done as a species or as, a, as, as people? What have we done so much for people to hate us? Why? Why what? Why? I don't understand it. And for that reason of me not understanding, I know a lot of people don't understand it. And if you ain't, if you ain't lived in it or if you ain't lived in the skin like this, you'll never understand it. That's why I speak for and I'll continue to speak for it. Until my people finally wake up and understand and realize what we do to ourselves affects us. And once we become great, once we start loving each other, helping each other, holding each other's hand, picking each other's up, hey man, give me a hug, brother. That ain't, giving another man a hug don't make you nothing lesser. It don't make you nothing else unless you want to be, unless you want to think that. That ain't being gay or nothing like that. That's showing your old man. And that's what is programmed in our heads that certain things are gay or that ain't cool or that's corny and shit. Well, fuck you then. You feel me? Why is love gay? Why is showing the next man respect, showing him that I'm happy to see you or calling him, what's up, king? Why is that less of a man? or that you? Be no, that ain't. That's showing love to your next brother, to your next man. And that's what we need to learn, to be able to love each other and say, brother, I love you. No matter what you're doing, I forgive you and I love you. And to look in the person's eyes to have sincere and a kind heart to say, yo, I love you, bro. You know what I'm saying? That feeling right there is everything. To have a stranger come up to you and look in your eyes and be so sincere and just say, I love you. You know what I'm saying? And mean it. Love is a beautiful thing. It's something that we shouldn't shy away from. It's something that we shouldn't be ashamed of whether you're a man or a woman, because if you have love for that person, then you just have love for that person, man. You can't help it. Love is an unconditional feeling that it feels so great, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, you call yourself the Bronze Bomber, which makes everyone think of Joe Lewis, of course. Uh, and a heavyweight champion, especially an American heavyweight champion of the world, carries with him, as you said, a certain responsibility. Mm -hmm. uh, you're an image for children, boys and girls alike. You are something of a king in sports. Looking back and knowing that you have a sense of history, is is the Joe Lewis thing a, a, just a coincidence where the bronze bomber comes from? Or is that a figure, a, a, a past heavyweight champion that you you model yourself after or idolize? Or if not, is there, there one that stands out for you? And in addition to that, what would you like for people to remember when they talk about you while you're alive, but mm -hmm. after this oh, career is yeah. over, what kind of heavyweight champion was Deontay Wilder? What yeah. did he bring to that throne, that strap, that crown? Uh, most definitely. Um, with, with the Joe Lewis thing, um, I definitely uh, got my Atlas name from him. Um, actually, my trainer, JD's, came up with it. We basically, mostly we brainstormed together um, because I was going to go with a nickname that I, I've always been called and stuff like that, but it wasn't just, you know, this is the professionals, you know, you wanted to put away the amateurish stuff and you know this is professional you're going into the pros so me being in the olympics winning the bronze he came up with the bronze but me having the power knocking people out i came up with the bomb so it's the bronze bomber you know the, the bomber came up with the bomb then with bomber and then we put it together the bronze bomber and um so jay is like a boxing like he, he's he's a historian when it comes to boxing and stuff like that and that's how i felt out about joe lewis and him being a brown bomber and stuff like that so we're both from the same state you know i went to the olympics and got the bronze i'm powerful he was a knockout artist as well too so he was a part of the bomb squad so we just put it together the brown bomber and the bronze bomber from alabama and it worked out well and you know what i want people to to look at me as 
And even when I when I leave the sport to remember Biaz, it's a man that was great, a man that spoke the truth, that spoke his peace, no matter what type of talk he was speaking. You know what I mean? He spoke and he gave it to us real. Because when you give it to people real, it may be harsh at first because they don't understand, but when they look back on life or go through a certain situation, they remember that. And I'm like, yo, he was right. You know, and that's what I do. I try to I try to spit knowledge and I try to lay lay down, you know, real life situations, real things that occur in life and that goes on. Because I wanna one day see the you know I always talk about speak it, believe it, receive it. And and I really want I really want one day to see the world where we can come together and stuff like that. But even speak it, believe it, receive it may not be too powerful enough for that to happen at this point in time. I may not have enough life in me to even see that. But, you know, but I can say that certain people that, well, everyone that I hang around or everyone that I be around or even just bring in, man, it's all love and stuff like that. And that's where it starts, though. So even just me getting just a little bit of it, it's, it's satisfying. But I want to one day wake up and look at the news and a lot of no killings is happening. You know, something like that. I mean, this is something that might be impossible, but nothing is impossible. We all have a decision making, whether we're crazy or whether we are, we're, we're, we're the intelligent person in the world. You know, we can be better as 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 a race. You know, not as a, like I said, I feel race is, is something is a concept. I feel something that's made up. But as a species, as 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 people, as the human, as human beings, you know what I mean? I feel we can do a lot better than what we do and how we treat people. You know what I mean? I don't see I, And that's what I want to be remembered as somewhat Deontay Wilder that he brought peace as well too. Forget the boxing. Because that's that that right there, that's automatic. You know what I mean? That gonna that gonna come with me. You know what I'm saying? But I wanna be known as something else outside of boxing, somebody that I brought people together. I made I made people feel like saying love, I love you, to the opposite sex or the opposite uh, 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 the opposite culture or whatever. That made it feel cool. Like, like it was it's Deontay Wilder to do it. Oh, you know what I'm, I'm going to do it. You know what I'm saying? Because I get people like that. I get guys like that, you know. Um, I get guys like that, you know what I mean? Make it feel like, or, or anybody else, that anyone that looks up to, if they see that person doing it, they feel like it's cool to do. And I try to make what people feel like that's corny or, 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 or that I'm supposed to do or if it, don't, it ain't cool or whatever. I try to make it feel cool because of who I am. You know, people respect me everywhere I go because I whoop ass, and I understand that. I have a skill, a set of skills that will get you out of there. And, and when people look at that, that's amazing to see me walk the streets like, man, because you hear the whispers. I hear them everywhere I go. I, you know, my guys hear them as well. They come back to me. If I don't hear it, they see it or they come back to me. No, man, that motherfucker knock you out, man. You'll hear the whisper. So people respect somebody that can all day, you know what I'm saying? But I don't abuse that uh, that privilege. I don't, because I, I can be around here acting a fool. Y'all don't see me out here acting fool, <laughs> acting a fool. Y'all don't see me doing too much. I may say certain shit. But it's the only time only time I say crazy stuff is when I'm finna get ready to fight. Because I'm in my moment, I'm in the element, I'm feeling the energy. And that's what I feel at the moment in time. So I don't want nobody to to to, to take offense of what I say, but do take me seriously. Because I only speak what I feel. Well, I appreciate you speaking uh, what was on your heart tonight, today. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you were uh, generous and patient. Giving of an interview like this is important, not just you know, for me, but for the fans that are able to now see another side of you, see that you're a person with dimensions. It's not just, you know, one dimensional character. Uh, so I appreciate that. You're definitely a real one. You know, you talk about being real. This is a real interview. <laughs> you know, uh, I was sat in this room for a few minutes before we started. I'll sit with a few minutes after. And people just need to know it is a peaceful, fun comfortable environment everybody here is harmonious and uh, I'm, I appreciate you showing that side I appreciate you giving me the time My and the respect <clears throat> heavyweight champion of the world WBC's own bronze bomber Deontay Wilder give him one bomb squad thank you sir you know what it is much appreciated blessings brother